um, cobbler in a, yeah in the beginning of um, our um, let's just say that our deployment uh, for Matterhorn and Calicaster. Uh, I think this talk uh, should be given by uh, Stuart or some of the guys of Manchester who, who can really tell you about what's like to have a real Gallicaster deployment with ha literally hundreds of agents. In our case, uh, the University of Cologne uh, has, I think, uh, 50,000 students. Uh, I think, Ruth can correct me, that it's the biggest university in Germany, uh, apart from the distance university. So, um, yeah, there are yeah, many disciplines also. But in our case, our uh, Gallicaster deployment is still uh, it's still uh, little, it's still small. We are starting, uh, we started last year in the winter semester uh, with only two rooms and I think three or four uh, portable capture agents. Um, so now we are moving forward to yeah, uh, installing more fixed uh, uh, rooms and yeah, we thought that it would be good to start automating the system even, even though right now uh, Things can be done manually if uh, the deployment, if the room number of rooms start to grow. It's good to have a good infrastructure that can uh, be extended easily. So we opted for uh, Cobbler and Ansible because it, uh, they seem like the most uh, uh, obvious choice. Yeah. So uh, right now we've got um, yeah one production environment. Um, uh, we've got also a production system with only one worker. Two streaming servers, uh, one download servers, process server. Well, you can read it there, and eight fixed uh, rooms, and also two or three uh, Gallicasters that we use for yeah spare uh, components if some of the other units breaks, and and those are currently sitting on my table, <laughs> in my office. Um, so why cobbler? Uh, we were looking for some. A standard way of uh, installing uh, Linux systems uh, remotely, and after considering several options that we found, um, uh, Cobbler seemed the most uh, uh, well supported. There was um, some companies behind it uh, using it, so it, it seemed like the obvious choice to make. And it's not uh, reinventing the wheel, as um, it's using uh, existing um, technologies, and the only thing that uh, Cobbler does is putting it all together and um, providing an um, easy-to-use interface and, and defining some concepts that uh, make uh, sense, uh, that provide a, a way of uh, making sense of all these technologies together. So um, uh, yeah, you can define distros with Cobbler. So this, mean, this means uh, yeah, having a CentOS distro or a Ubuntu or whatever. Then you define profiles, which is uh, a distro plus a kickstart file or a preceed file, which basically define the options of that you are going. Uh, we sorry for my English. The options that you are going to use for installing the systems uh, in terms of size of the partitions, um, um, programs installed, and so on, uh, users uh, created. And then, if you want to go further, you can define systems with ties uh, a specific uh, profile to uh, specific machines, uh, to a specific machine, maybe using the MAC address or any other characteristic. Um, the case of Ansible was, uh, we were considering also other options. Uh, the most popular, may it's maybe Puppet, and also CF Engine. Uh, at first, we were going to use CF Engine because it was used by our system department, but. Uh, uh, then we saw that Ansible was a better choice because it was simpler. Uh, the learning curve was uh, yeah, not so steep as uh, Puppet or CF Engine. And it allowed us uh, to do pretty much everything we wanted. So as you can see, yeah, uh, one of the characteristics is th that it's agentless, unlike uh, Puppet or CF Engine. And it's very simple to use, and basically you you put there, you write on, on a file what, whatever you want to use or the actions you would do if you were installing the system manually and, and then uh, Ansible will reply them um, the same, replay them the same way you would. And it also the, has a good thing that um, if you don't know how to do something with uh, the uh, Ansible modules, you can simply write the uh, command line that you would use yourself, and uh, Ansible will do it the same way. 
And it's uh, patch oriented. That means that um, yeah, you run, you basically run the installation action. You say install this agent using this um, playbook, and and that works. But you can also configure it in a way that the agents will themselves uh, pick up their configuration and install uh, it automatically. So yeah, what we basically did uh, this um, past uh, winter semester is. Um, defining uh, the cobbler profiles that we wanted to use. We are using CentOS uh, 6 for the servers and Ubuntu 12.04 for the capture agents. Um, yeah, and uh, after defining the profiles, which is in terms of saying, OK, we want uh, this much uh, hard drive for this partition, and we want this user defined, and we want uh, these, um, these packages installed. Then Ansible uh, takes over and installs the rest, uh, whatever configurations you need and everything. In my case, I was more focused on installing the, the agents. Uh, Ruth was uh, in charge of the servers. And I would say that, I, I won't say that it's more difficult to deal with the agents, but uh, you have at least to take care of um, Take into account the graphical interface and managing some configurations that are a little more tricky than the simple command line that you would expect in a server. Um, so yeah, um, this um, summer semester uh, we are um, upgrading to one Matterhorn 1.6 our production environment, and we have installed it using Ansible already. And we have installed uh, and uh, we have moved our configuration, our agents, capture agents configuration into Ansible. So all of them are installed using Cobbler and Ansible. And now we are thinking about moving forward. Um, so far, it's, uh, as I say, these are the fix first experiences. So um, everything is more or less, there are uh, some manual points in the process. So we have to trigger the installation of a uh, of a machine, of course, manually, but we have to select, like, okay, install this uh, this profile in Cobbler, and then once installed, we have to go and say, okay, now configure it using Ansible. But uh, yeah, our next goal is, of course, uh, yeah, just triggering an installation of a machine and, and then having Ansible to run itself uh, to, to run uh, automatically after uh, the machine is installed. Um, uh, I'm considering uh, to use this pool mode, which means that the agents will periodically um, get a copy of the configuration they should have and check that the configuration is all in place, the same way as, uh, as Puppet does, because Ansible is <coughs> mostly you run, you run it whenever you want to configure the agent, and that's it. And if you want to check if the configuration is OK, you have to manually run it again. But there is a way to yeah, schedule, for instance, using a cron job, uh, having Ansible uh, periodically uh, fetch the configuration from, for instance, uh, Git repository and check that everything is okay. And I'm all, I have been also checking some alternatives to Cobbler, mainly because uh, with Cobbler you can define profiles to easily install machines, but you cannot, or at least I have not found an easy way to, to have an overview of all the machines that you have installed with Cobbler and maybe have yeah, an overview of your systems, like saying, OK, I've got uh, nine servers. This one has this profile, or this one has been installed at this time, or this one is that. Um, yeah, this, this is pretty much it. As I said, first steps. So um, I'm willing to hear your opinions, questions, or I'm sorry if I went too fast. Um, With your um, installer capture agents, um, how many um, machines can you, how many cob uh, machines can you cobbler at, at once? Are you doing one, uh, one at a time, or have you got a, a stack? Um, since we are triggering the the installation by hand, um, the machines currently are. Uh, I have to yeah uh, switch on the machine, and then I get the the installation menu, and I have to go and <laughs> choose a profile. Yeah. Uh, with the agents, it's not like that because uh, with Cobbler, if, if you define a system, um, this means you def just in a system you say use this profile with a machine 
that has this MAC address, for instance. And so when you restart this MAC address, uh, then the machine will automatically get that profile and get it installed. We haven't done that with the capture agents yet because, yeah, we are still, you know, in a starting phase. Um, so, so far, I uh, mostly uh, install as many agents as I can go and say, okay, install this one, then install this one. Uh, but, of course, in the future, we will have to do it uh, in a more automated way. And, yeah. yeah, potentially all of them, because it's eight of them, and I think Cobbler can keep up with... Yeah, we, we're kind of, we're, we're, we've got a KVM now and a switch that allows us to build ten at a, ten at a time, mm -hmm. um, essentially. We sort of pl plug our little capture agents in um, to a KVM and a, a switch into the Cobbler server, which is actually another capture agent box. It's the same, same hardware, because um, it doesn't take up much desk space. And uh, you set it off going, come back, you know, an hour later, and you've got ten capture agents. Um, oh yes, uh, I, I didn't say, but yeah, and it takes the whole process maybe half an hour, yeah. twenty minutes. So yeah, yeah it's um, pretty fast. So we, we also should point out we're, we're trying to push Ansible in the OpenCast community as sort of best practice for looking after your capture agents and as well as looking after the sort of deploying um, the OpenCast. Uh, uh, video processing uh, system, so uh, we, we use it for, for, for both. So um, if we w want another worker and stuff, we have another VM duplicated, and then we just simply run uh, our Ansible playbook, which turns it into a fully working uh, Matterhorn, Matterhorn worker node. Um, and you know, if you see anybody saw my tweet that we, we were we reconfigured them last night just before we went to the pub, so uh, the <laughs> so up the framework that uh, the, the video cameras would encode at. Um, so, um, so we're trying to push Ansible in the community and also we're actually now pushing it within the university uh, as well. So other teams who, who have, uh, have similar problems of looking after large numbers uh, of things are, uh, are also looking at Ansible. Um, so if anybody's looking, at looking after their own deployments and stuff, it's, it's, it's the way to go. <laughs> Just another comment to the push mode or pull mode. Uh, as Stuart was pretty reluctant quite a, for quite a while to push on uh, automatically updates and all sorts of things. Every update you push, or even worse, if you uh, have them pulled from your capture agents, you lose control. So uh, the recommendation should be have a look if you s don't want to stick to the uh, to the push mode, so you know when you did the update and what what update you did, because otherwise, uh, again, even though not all Ansible runs go through, and uh, your machines might still end up in different states uh, at different times. So, question with going to pu uh, pull mode is riskier. Let's say so. Yeah, uh, yeah. of course, uh, it's not only set in the pool mode, but also you have probably to yeah, enhance your playbooks and make, it, make them more uh, verbose when an error happens, maybe sending a mail or making some notification. But th that, that's probably, not that's probably, that's surely why we haven't <laughs> used the pool mode yet. Uh, and, and we are only limiting to, yes, pushing the updates when we want to because that way we can be sure if the playbook had run through or not. <laughs>